Hey everybody, it's Pete. It's uh, nighttime. We're actually going to do something different. In this video, we actually challenged everybody this morning in today's live stream to put a bunch of stocks in there. This is officially the first episode of a new video that we're going to do. I guess we'll call it a new uh, live stream series. <laughs> it's working the charts. We get a lot of really good feedback of uh, understanding how to draw trend lines properly, seeing how to spot when a stock gets stuck in a box. So we're going to go over the charts. And we asked everybody to post some questions below which stocks they wanted us to work the charts for. So welcome to the first episode of Working the Charts. And we're going to go bar by bar, stock by stock uh, of everything that everyone posted below uh, today's video. So I'm just going to show you what we're talking about here. Uh, so you can see today's video, we did Peloton. Um, but then we had a bunch of people post in some ideas. So we're just going to go right over those ideas for everybody and um, cover them right away. All right. So we're actually going to start uh, Boss Biggs GTV started out with Disney. All right, so let's hop on over into Disney, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, <laughs> we're gonna do this like it's a game. We're gonna actually do play by play of what's actually going on. Is there an idea? Is there not an idea? And we'll get into it right away. If there's nothing to do, I'm just gonna leave it alone, and we'll go straight into the next idea because it's not really that hard to tell if order flow is obvious, if there's something to do, if they had bad news, good news, and we'll, we'll start to put it in and determine when and if <laughs> there's an idea. So welcome to work in the charts. We're just going to go right over into it. So Disney right now, obviously, um, let me actually add earnings in here because that's actually a big thing to keep an eye on um, as far as knowing when the earnings came out. So Disney actually just came out with earnings just recently. So what we're actually looking for, we're looking for something to be obvious. So we start working the charts here uh, and we go back a little bit. This is kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for where there's obvious order flow. If that order flow gets broken, where does it stop? And then ultimately, where does it reassert itself? So you can actually see here uh, what, you know, kind of something that we're really, I guess, kind of getting to be known for is the push and the pause, right? That push and that pause literally tells us that somebody with deep pockets is actually pushing it and then taking a break and then pushing it again. So if we don't see that, especially on the bullish side, we just kind of like leave it alone. So the reason I'm pointing that out is over here, we actually had a really nice move going back to November and you can see that it broke down and this would have been the move down in Disney if it took out this level, but it didn't, it kind of reevaluated itself, right? However, we kind of work our way sideways now and this is a really important question, and I'm just going to come back on the screen right now because it's kind of fun, is if you cannot answer the question, is it obvious, there's no trade. And we, we actually kind of got into it a little bit this morning. Somebody was actually calling out Rivian, which was basically since the IPO, it's been straight up. And somebody asked about short selling it today, and I said, absolutely, positively, no way in the world would I be short selling one of the strongest stocks. Now, could you say that it was a little bit overdue for a pullback? Sure, of course you could have. But was that a great idea? Was it the best idea on the table? Absolutely not. The stock did end up going down today, but that doesn't mean it was a good idea. So we're going to transfer that over into Disney right now. We'll kind of zoom out over here. And there's really nothing to do in Disney right now. If you're long Disney right now, you're basically hoping – that it reverses. Earnings came out were not awesome, and the stock is now gapped down and rolling over. So let me just see who put this one in here. Uh, Boss Biggs TV. Okay, let's just put it out there. I don't see anything to do in Disney right now. I think if we're looking at the order flow in Disney, you basically just be guessing. So I'm just going to kind of leave that one alone. Personally, I don't see any order flow. I don't see any push other than the push to the downside after earnings. So for me personally right now, Nothing to work there because there's nothing to do. All right. So we're going to work our way over. Let's take a look at the next idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dr. Modi. All right. Uh, work the chart for ALGN, uh, Align Technology for Invisalign. He's a dentist and trading for the last two years. All right. All right, Dr. Modi. Let's take a look at it. ALGN. Let's see if there's anything going on there. All right, so we've got a little bit of back and forth. We might be able to see this a little bit better on the weekly chart. So if we zoom out on the weekly chart and go back over here, we kind of have this going on right now. So that's kind of the big picture right now. And if that's the longer term move, I would say that still looks pretty good. A very wide break of the trend right there. And that would be the top of the box right there. So longer term picture, this still actually looks pretty good in uh, a line, A-L-L. 
GN right now. But this is also a weekly chart. So you can see that this box is a very, very big box. It's a very wide box. However, the big thing you want to point out here, working this chart on a longer time frame, the bullish order flow is still valid. Where it would not be valid anymore is if it breaks down and gets below the five, it looks like around the 570 level. So right now, ALN looks pretty good. And it's actually starting to head back up towards that 740 level. So right now, it's kind of stuck in that box on the weekly chart. As of right now, we have two weeks of melted candles. It's still valid, but still bullish. And if we kind of zoom this out a little bit more on the daily chart, worked its way all the way back. Look at how long this has actually had some good, solid bullish order flow. What I would personally be doing on this stock is I think I'd be leaning a little bit more towards the weekly chart, not the daily chart, because it doesn't look like it has enough consistent volatility to be monitoring it on that daily chart. But you know what? I actually think the stock looks pretty good. So working the charts on ALGN, Dr. Modi, I, looking all right right now. So we're going to work our way over to the next one. Uh, let's take a look. Um, Jason, I uh, hope you took profits from Riven. All right, Jason doesn't have a stock in there, so I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, CHPT and IONQ. So actually, Lewis, this is actually two stocks that we watch quite a bit during the day. So we'll start out with CHPT. I'm going to work our way over to that one. So you can see how we've been working this chart for a while right now. It actually broke into a downtrend. Now we're actually here. We are now in, I guess you might say, one of the strongest, hottest, on fire sectors right now, which is um, electric vehicle charging stocks right now. So this actually still looks pretty good. And the big thing here is we finally got through here. Now, what I don't like in working the chart right now is the fact that we have Melted candle, melted candle, melted candle. Melted candle, if you don't know, again, just want to come back on the screen. We have two types of candles. Really, the only type of candlesticks you really need to know, and I know that says a lot, is an energy candlestick where it opens near the low and closes near the high. So there's a lot of buying that happened during that candle. The opposite of that is a melted candle where it traded all over the place and basically opened and closed in the same spot. Melted candles represent indecision. So we actually have kind of a cool... Um, discussion here. There's not a question whether or not working the chart here, CHPT is bullish, but the last three days have been indecision, even though they've been going higher. So this is not a situation where I'd actually be looking to add to this position. I like the fact that it finally got over 26. The order flow and the trend right now is still bullish, but I would want to see a little bit more than just one or two days of well-bid candlesticks where we go higher highs, higher lows. I want to see them close near the high. And you can see over here on CHPT, that didn't happen. So if I was long this, which I actually am in the swing trade, I would not be looking to add to this right now until we see a little bit better follow through. All right. So I want to go to the next one here for Lewis, which was IONQ, which is actually trading pretty well right now. Let's take it up and take a look at it for everybody. Obviously, the recent price action is pretty good right now. So let's actually go out and we need to draw a couple of different uh, work the chart twice here because we actually kind of went par parabolic after we finally got above 10. Now, here's the interesting thing. Is this stock bullish? A hundred percent. This stock is bullish. However, <laughs> based on what the stock normally does, would we be looking to put on a new swing trade tomorrow? Not if you're on my trading desk, because if you look to the left, the normal move in the stock looks like it's around six dollars since it started to rally. And the last two days, the stock has gone 11. So again, we got that, that little bit of a distinction here that the order flow is good, really obvious. We're picking up in volatility, we're picking up in volume. But over the last two days, the stock just went twice what it normally does. So for me tomorrow, IONQ would be a day trading opportunity looking for one more day of bullish pressure if we get it but I would not be looking for a new swing trade until the stock paused. Now, what would that pause look like? Well, we just talked about it on the last stock. It would actually be this. It would actually be a couple of melted candles. We got that big push up. We take a couple of days break, and then we look for the move up. So I like both of these stocks, but I wouldn't be looking to add to either one of them until either CHPT gives us a well-bid candlestick, exactly like we see there where it closes on the high, a little bit more feedback, or this one here, IONQ, I want to see it pause before I look to add again. All right. Um, all right. So let's go out to the next one. Uh, RIVN. 
looking for a 50% retracement. Yeah, let's actually, so Jason actually talked about that. So let's pull in RIVN. Um, obviously the new IPO, the stock has been just absolutely amazing. And this is the one that we had, you know, Ruby asked the question this morning about short selling this stock. No, I, I don't, we even said it this morning, I was not looking to short sell it. There were other better ideas to be buying. So in other words, even though this stock pulled back, you have to, you have a scale of this is my perfect trade. And then everything works away from that perfect trade. In this case here, we were looking for a pullback. The stock does not have a lot of uh, history. It's five, six days worth of trading. So you're really just trading that most recent price action. And as we just mentioned, somewhere around a 50% retracement would be where we'd start to look for it. However, a stock that has six days worth of price action, you're not really using retracement levels because there's just not a lot of price history there. So Rivian, awesome as far as active trading. However, you're mostly just trading on the shorter time frames until the stock gets a little bit more um, history. <laughs> There's really no other way to say it. So I love looking at Rivian right now. It's in play, not even a question it's in play, uh, but I'm not gonna have a longer term call on this right now because it's mostly just the shorter time frame. But what's kind of cool about this is if we really wanna get into the price action, we can actually kind of do this where we're actually drawing something on the only price action we have, which is just this last six days. So if we were really drilling it in pretty hard, that's actually where the trend got broken, which was right around uh, 10 o'clock today. Um, and now we kind of just went into a box. So really the next trade in Rivian is we need to get out of this price action. So if it breaks down here, a little bit shorter time frame. if it goes back up, we'll look for the IPO to start kicking back in again. Got to keep these things in context. It's only available for six days. You really can't predict or, or have a really good feel for reading the tape just over a couple of days like this. It's great to trade if you're reading the tape on the shorter time frame. All right. This is kind of fun, actually. We're going to go over to the next one. Uh, hey, Clyde, what's up? Um, SLV. Why don't we use that one? Because Clyde is finished with dinner and on the video with us. And John, I'll get to yours in just one second. Oh, actually, this is kind of a cool one. Let me actually zoom out on this one. So silver, right? Silver shares trust. So we had this nice obvious move to the downside, right? So now working the charts, this is the price where it broke right here. Now it's a little bit of a wider window, right? So we had this big move to the downside, broke to the upside. And obviously this is a little bit more longer term type of play. So right now, this was the box. This was a gigantic box, but there's now a different way to look at it. We have a one, two, three bottom. This could have been an early entry. But we had months and months of selling right now. So really, what we're looking at for me personally on SLV, I actually do like it as far as a reversal now where we can start drawing a new trend in the opposite direction. And this pause, we'll be looking for a new move to the upside. All right. Uh, what was the stock John had in there? Uh, TTC. It was a tattooed chef, I believe. All right. Uh, okay. I actually don't see anything to do here. This is just kind of... I don't really, you know, it's actually what's kind of interesting here. And this is probably one of the top lessons that we can really give everybody is it has to be obvious in order to want to do something. It has to be obvious one day of price action. Maybe you can get involved, but it wouldn't be anything that I'd have any kind of position size. So if we take a look here at TTCF, did it have a good day today? Sure. But can you look at this stock right now and say, my gosh, I can't wait to piggyback on what they're doing. Not for me, not for one day's worth of price action. So for me here, John, I'd kind of be staying away from TTCF until I start to see maybe a second day, maybe a third day, maybe from one week to the next, and you can start to dig into that a little bit. Uh, but by, So by the way, Clyde, I actually do think that SLV has now returned and started moving back up to the upside. Uh, let's see. Allison, how's it going? Uh, scared to trade today. EVGO broke my spirit. You know what? We actually had a conversation with somebody in our community today about um, – reacting to trades being uh, sad or exciting. So I'll give you a little bit of a, of a professional mindset thing, Allison. Um, trading gains and losses, but especially on the losing side, you need to know how much you're willing to risk prior to the trade. And that needs to be a dollar amount. It could be 300, it could be 500, it could be a thousand, it could be a hundred. If you accept that dollar amount prior to the trade and you happen to have a losing trade, it shouldn't be that big of a deal because prior to the trade, you said, all right, I'm willing to risk a hundred bucks. If it happens, I'll just go to the next trade and make it back on the next trade. So I understand that about EVGO. However, it's up to us 
to choose the stocks that match your criteria, match your volatility. We actually mentioned this today in both EVGO and in BLNK this morning that the volatility on these stocks are a little bit wilder on the daily chart. And if you choose to recognize that and trade it, you have to be okay with the swings. But even if the swings are wider, then you reduce your position size to compensate for that wider swing. So maybe else, maybe on the next time, just think about working your position size a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hey, Sandy, how's it going? Welcome to our first episode of working the charts. <laughs> kind of, kind of fun. Uh, XPEV. All right. So we actually talked about this um, in our coaching call today. I actually like XPEV on a breakout over $50. So that's actually where I have it right now. Um, if you can see here, $50. Oop, let me zoom that out. $50 is actually a pretty big level. It got hammered here over $50, tried to get up here again, and now we keep dancing around there. So right now, for me personally, I like the fact that it's rallied. It's showing some relative strength, but I'm not doing anything in XPEV until it gets above 50. That's the level that I have right now. We actually set a buy stop for that in our community today over 50. So if it trades down, I'm leaving it alone, gets above 50, we'll start working a position in uh, XPEV. Okay. Uh, I want to stick to the list over here because I promised everybody this morning that I would get to everybody if anybody put stuff in there. Uh, James Prey, uh, SLGG. Let's take a look at that one first. Uh, all right. Oh, this is kind of a cool one. So you know why it's a cool one? Because we're actually getting some opportunity here. So if we start to work the chart here, this actually looks uh, very similar to what we had in um, Tilray, which we've been watching. So we have this longer term move to the downside. This is where we actually broke. Now, that's kind of one monster move there. But the trend is, quote unquote, officially broken there. Right. So that means that we need to draw two lines. Number one is the low prior to the trend line breaking. And then we have to draw another one where we believe that this stopped. Now, this is one giant candle. So that's kind of a little bit of a tougher um, number to use. It'd be tough to say that that all the way up there is where this trend broke. I wouldn't really say that. I would actually say that it broke here, kind of danced around, and right here would be the level. So I would say we pulled back the last couple of days. However, if I'm watching the stock, this is actually what I'm looking at right now. We're actually making higher lows and higher highs. So I kind of like this as a potential reversal trade back to the upside. So remember, a lot of the stocks, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, We've been talking about as these stocks go down, bottom out, and start for the first time to the upside, this is a good example where it's just starting to potentially reverse to the upside. So if I'm looking at SLGG today, it would only be an initial piece on this reversal. If it rallies and pulls back and doesn't follow through, we had a much smaller piece on the initial entry. So that was a pretty good example there. All right. Um, let me see. I want to make sure that we go over to the ones that were posted in here during the day today. Uh, let's see, PLTR and NEO. All right, Goran, let's take a look at that. PLTR and NEO. PLTR, actually, since earnings, really hasn't done much. We've actually spent quite a bit of time on this right now. And here's the thing I want to talk about PLTR. This is a really polarizing stock. A lot of people love this stock or they hate this stock. Our job is to recognize, do share, is there shareholder value that smart money is pulling into the stock and starting to pay higher prices? No, PLTR is stuck in the middle of nowhere right now. Maybe at some point it could start to get well bid. Maybe we finally get above this $28 level that looks kind of like a brick wall. I don't see anything to do in PLTR right now. We don't even have to work the charts. There's nothing to do. You look at that stock right now and it hasn't moved since March. And prior to March, it was a move to the downside. As of right now, there's no edge in PLTR. If I was going to do something in PLTR from an active trader perspective, I'd have an alert set for $28 and then above 28, I'd read the tape to see if there was another trade. Kind of similar to NEO right now, which is NEO still kind of stuck in a box as well. So we had this move to the downside, broke the move to the downside right around here, but you can see that we kept getting up to right around the 43, 43, 50 level and weren't able to get through there. If I had to choose between the two of them, NEO has a little bit better price action, but NEO also has that big overhang that a lot of the Chinese stocks have right now. So personally, I actually wouldn't be looking at either one of them right now, NEO or PLTR. Certain things have to happen before I'd look to get into those. So good question on both of those. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure we go through everybody that posted one. 
Uh, DraftKings. Oh, wow. DKNG. That one is not looking good right now either. So we work our way out. DKNG. This is bearish on top of bearish. This one is actually accelerating to the downside. And if you go to the left here, the next significant support level where buyers stepped in is all the way down here. So we're talking around $35. Not a monster move, but right now, man, DraftKings is just bearish. I don't see anything else to do at all right now in DraftKings. Uh, okay, so let's see. Abdul, we'll, we'll take a look at two of them. I don't want to spend time on all of those. I want to give some respect to people on the call right now. RBLX and OSTK. Let's take a look at that. RBLX. Obviously, the stock has been taken off. And if you remember what we talked about before, what are the odds of making money if I buy now? So we're talking about a swing trade. The optimal entry for RBLX was after earnings when it pulled back. So if we zoom out on the chart over here in RBX, it's spiked up, pulled back, and paused. Remember we just said before that melted candle represents indecision. But when that melted candle happens within the context of momentum, so a push and a pause and then melted candle, that gives us an entry. So this entry here in RBLX led to one, two, three, four days to the upside. So now we're four days after the optimal entry. I still like RBLX long, but I don't like it long as a new swing trade unless it's a significantly lower portion or position size because it's already gone four days beyond the optimal entry. Remember, this is what we're talking about, reading the tape and order flow. The order flow is obvious, but if we take it a step further and read the tape, it's four days too late to start a new position. So we can do it, but because it's late, it would be less share size. All right, so we're going to go with OSTK. The stock has actually been pretty decent recently as well. Now, the challenge here with OSTK is all of these topping tails. We're seeing a lot of uh, less than ideal price action. So we'll probably zoom this out a little bit on the weekly chart if we look at that. And now you can see well bid into two melted candles. So really what it comes down to right now for OSTK, I probably wouldn't do anything until it got above 110. I don't see anything going on there. Got above there and came back hard. Couldn't get up there and came back. And now we're stalling there again. So for OSTK, I would personally have an alert for 110, <laughs> for 110, not 1010, above 110, then I'd start to look for a new trade through that level. All right, uh, let's work our way over. We got uh, one more, IWM. All right, so uh, JY, IWM. So we're going to take a look at the Russell 2000. And if we go here, we've actually had a decent move recently and working the chart here. We kind of went parabolic, so that is the actual move. Now we have to draw a new one as we go to the upside again. Now here's where it gets interesting. We actually did break right here. So what's interesting now is that close is actually a change of trend right here. So now we would actually start to draw a new move on the opposite side where the Russell is technically in a bearish tone right now. And we'd be looking down here as the next support level. So I actually don't like what I see in the Russell right now. Uh, let's take a look. Let's actually see. There's a couple other ones on the table right now. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Johan. How are you, Johan? Uh, nice cat. Uh, PayPal. PayPal is not looking good either. PayPal will be, be looking to bid uh, into a stock that's getting hammered right now. And if we keep zooming out, um, there is nothing but bearish order flow in PayPal right now. I personally wouldn't be looking to be a buyer of PayPal right now until we started to see the weekly chart um, catch a bit a little bit. Uh, let's see. Hey, Kevin, how's it going, man? Uh, BBY actually looking a little bit better. We actually had the breakout here. If everybody remembers, we kept talking about this on the live stream in the morning. Uh, so the order flow in BBY actually looks really good. Really, really good. Still pretty strong. Went parabolic. So we're actually now pausing for three days. So I like BBY. I'd actually be looking for it to get right back above the 135, 136 level to start looking for a new move to the upside. And again, a lot of what I do in the swing trades, I use buy stops. So I needed to head in that direction. So Kevin, I'm with you on BBY. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, let's see. Oracle, Vincent. Hey, Vince, what's going on? Uh, Oracle's actually pulling back the last couple of days, but the daily chart really hasn't done much. Um, longer term, it's actually been pretty good. You can see here, even if we just go from here and start working the chart a little bit, we actually broke it. So right there is the break of the downtrend. 
and up here puts this stock in a box. So really, where is the trade in Oracle right now? <laughs> Maybe over the last couple of days, but I don't see a trade in Oracle. The tech stocks have been really strong the last uh, week and a half, and they kind of floated all the way back up on the um, sector rotation. I can see looking at this, but it would be lower on my list of stocks in my watch list. So short term, a little bit of a rally, but a little bit over the last month or so, it's kind of been in that box. So we'll see. Maybe it'll break out of that pause uh, from yesterday. and We'll start to look for a new move to the upside. Not ruling it out, Vince. It's actually got some, some price action that we can take a look at, but you can see over the last month or so, it's kind of been sideways. Uh, let me see. Uh, that PLTR. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that. PLTR is such a polarizing stock. There's so many people that love the stock and maybe they love the CFO or the CEO. I don't know. But again, we're here to talk about opportunities to trade right now. Still kind of stuck sideways. Uh, let me see. Um, TTD. Actually, we did not talk about TTD. Let's actually jump into that one right now and we'll take a look. All right, TTD, the stock's actually re reported uh, and we're actually trading really well since it reported. Now, the challenge for TTD, well, first of all, obviously, um, the stock is bullish right now. And it, we could actually zoom this in. If we go to the 60-minute chart, you'll actually see the trend just a little bit better. And maybe we could even zoom it in from kind of like right there and here, which actually, by the way, that's a pretty cool tip. Um, if any stock you're looking at goes parabolic, drop down a time frame and you'll start to work the chart uh, with a little bit more realistic price action. So we're on the hourly chart right now. We'd actually have one of two things. We'd have to break here and then we'd be looking for support down here around 102.50 or the buyers step back up and we take out the new high. So if we zoom that out on the, uh, on the daily chart, the bottom line is TTD is... Uh, on fire since earnings, maybe a little bit overbought. Today, it traded into a bearish U-turn where it punched through and came back. I'd probably be leaning a little bit more towards one more day to the downside and then start to look for a new move to the upside. I think a good example of that um, heading into tomorrow, into um, Thursday, is uh, FCX. So FCX actually has a pretty solid um, trend from the lows over here in the beginning of October. Uh, but now it's actually punched up, pulled back for a couple of days. So I'm looking for FCX to find some buyers tomorrow and uh, look for a new swing trade tomorrow. So uh, this was kind of fun, right? Um, totally unscheduled. We didn't let anybody know about it. Uh, but we did have a lot of questions this morning about how to work the chart. So maybe we'll turn this into kind of like a regular um, thing that we do. Probably not every day. I get a little bit tired. It's 7 o'clock at night. Uh, I haven't left my desk all day. Um, but look, bottom line is um, I love interacting with everybody. So we will turn working the charts into something new that we do um, throughout the week. So thank you so much, everybody uh, who's here with me right now. This is pretty awesome. Uh, so, Kevin, yeah, we're going to do them as often as possible. I'll let everybody know. Um, but for everybody that participated and actually, if you're here right now, thank you so much. This is awesome. Uh, and if you have any questions, absolutely leave a comment below in the video and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'd appreciate that as well. Have an awesome night, everybody. Get a good night's sleep. I'll see you on the live stream tomorrow morning at 7.30. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it.